Center Bible Study Night to all of you Bible students thank God for your lives and for all of you our precious guests welcome tonight we will continue with our Bible study in 2nd Timothy chapter 3 part 2 and Pastora Doris Nadurata of Pagasa Center Ireland will be our facilitator teacher and so I urge you that let us focus and let us listen, let us take note and then go back to the scripture itself so that we can be augmented in our understanding of the word of God in 2 Timothy chapter 3. Let's come to prayer. Oh God, our Father, we continue to humble ourselves before you. We knowledge that we are nothing we are dependent on you and for whatever that displease you that we do oh god forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness that tonight lord we will be honoring you worshiping you acceptably and that lord you alone we declare is our god and you are our God of wisdom. You are the God of truth. And so God, lead us into more of your truth as we go for this Bible study night. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We bless your holy name in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I 
desire, only this I seek, just to dwell, dwell, dwell here forever. This will be my posture, laying at your feet, just to dwell, dwell.
Blessed evening, everyone. Welcome to our Wednesday Bible study night. Glory to God for your heart to learn more about the scripture. I am Pastora Doris Nadurata, co-pastor of Pastor Ben for Nadurata, serving the ministry here in Ireland. Before we start, I would like to honor my leaders, Pastor Shea and Pastor Godofredo Ambat. Thank you for the wonderful privilege to be used by God to deliver this message. And I would like also to honor Pastor Gosh Ambat, Ninang Karen, Pastors Allen and Sai Bakani, and all the primary leaders and all connected groups, cell members, friends, and everyone. At the comfort of your home or everywhere, we can listen and ponder on the Word of God. Tonight's Bible study is on 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 10 to 17. It's continuation of my last week's topics on godlessness in the end times. As the signs around us prove we are already in the last days and we believe on the second coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Do we? Make sure we all believe in that. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we want to thank you. We honor you for you are glorious, O Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity that you have given us. We ask forgiveness from our sins that we have committed, not pleasing to you. Lord, your great and mighty and your love endures forever. So, Lord God, help us that the wisdom will be coming from you, O God. And uh, may the Holy Spirit be with us and continue to uh, give us wisdom so that uh, we the message will cut through our hearts, Lord God. Thank you for every day that you have provided us, that you, you have a purpose in our lives, O Lord. So lead us tonight, and uh, may you be honored in tonight's Bible study. In Jesus' mighty, mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, again, it's in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 10 to 17. Let us read. Let's open our Bibles. It's the man of God and the word of God. Verse 10. But you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra. What persecutions I endured, and out of them all the Lord delivered me. In verse 12, yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution, verse 13, but evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Verse 14, but you must continue in the things which you have learned and being assured of knowing from whom you have learned them, 15, and that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Verse 16, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instructions in righteousness. Verse 17, That the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. These are Paul's final words to Timothy, his son in faith. It, the topics will be the Lord rescues in verses 10 to 13, the Lord equips in verses 14 to 17, take notes, and then the Lord judges will be tackled by Pastor Alan Bakani in chapter 4, the Lord judges and the Lord rewards. We will tackle only the Lord rescues, which is uh, in verse 10 to 13. The Lord rescues under that topic will be my suffering which is, you can notice, verses 10 to 11, Paul said, it's my suffering and inevitable for godliness in verses 12 to 13. And the Lord equips, verses 14 to 17, under that will be your scripture, 14 to 15, inspired by God 
in verses 16 to 17. Now, there are four things to which I want to draw your attention now. Fundamental things in the Christian life. First, the Lord rescues. Have you been rescued? He rescues us from all evil. That is wonder, which is uh, in verse 10 to 13. The Lord rescues under that topic will be my suffering, which is, you can notice, verses 10 to 11. Paul said, it's my suffering and inevitable for godliness in verses 12 to 13. And the Lord equips, verses 14 to 17, under that will be your scripture, 14 to 15, inspired by God in verses 16 to 17. Now, there are four things to which I want to draw your attention now. Fundamental things in the Christian life. First, the Lord rescues. Have you been rescued? He rescues us from all evil. That is wonderful truth for the Christian, isn't it? You will suffer for your Christian life, but the Lord will rescue you from all your suffering. Second, you are going to be in a battle, not a picnic. And like every soldier, you need equipment. Paul is reminding young Timothy that the Lord equips you. Some people say, what's the point of having a Bible school or equipping trucks? What's the point of having life class, those school of leaders? The Lord equips us. The third truth will suffer persecution. Then he talks, um, the Lord judges everything about you, the knowledge and about him then he gives a general truth paul gives a general truth the lord awards prizes crowns for those who have been faithful in this matter which means in the suffering in serving god if you can remember those four things you have got four wonderful truths for the christian life for your life he rescued you you need to be equipped he equips you and then the third is you will suffer persecution. And the fourth is he will, he will reward you, which will be tackled next week by Pastor Allen. For example, Paul talks about my suffering. You notice that is personal. He said my suffering. Then he makes a general statement that all, all who live a godly life will suffer persecution. We are not exempted from that persecution again for first paul talks about his personal my my suffering that is personal then he makes a general statement that all who live a godly life talks about us talks about him or timothy or everyone every christians then he talks about timothy himself his son in faith your knowledge of the scripture he said, your knowledge of the scripture which you have had from a child. Then Paul gives a general truth of the scripture, which is the inspired word of God, which can equip anyone for the same task. Okay. Then he talks about Timothy's preaching that is personal again. And that the general truth that the time is coming when preaching will be unpopular. That no one will, will not listen about preaching of the gospel. You remember what was discussed last week. We are certainly in that time. We are in the end times. For it, he goes back again to himself, to Paul, and talks about his own prize that is awaiting for him which means Paul talks about Paul in the future. Then he makes a general statement that the prize is waiting for all who love Christ appearing, not only him, to us also. The next thing to notice about the whole passage is that links are made. Okay, Paul's suffering is linked up with Christ. The crown he's going to get is because he has suffered and kept faithful. Did you suffer? Are you suffering? But wait, Paul is saying it is linked up with his price. The Bible is connected with preaching. 
that is what you are to preach or to share the gospel to your friends or to a congregation and that that is the inspired word of god there is a wonderful pattern emerging in this as far as we know the last letter of paul these are the four most important thoughts that he wanted to leave in our minds first our suffering from which the lord will rescue us again number one suffering number two our task for which the lord will equip us our preaching then our preaching and teaching for which the lord will judge us he will judge us if we are sharing the word of god if we share to our friends or to anyone who needs um, salvation and our faithfulness for which the lord will reward us will he find us faithful unto the end let us uh, look at paul's suffering he writes now you have observed my teaching the word observe is interesting i remember when i was working in computer in a computer company where i need to repair a uh, cash registers of restaurants or department stores where i started my job i am observing what the what my uh, superior is doing and what my seniors senior engineers are doing so the quickest way to learn to be a christian teacher is indeed to watch somebody else teaching like when i when i uh, look at them how they do it and then i can improve i can update i remember that time uh there are um all the engineers which i respect i i didn't uh, i still look up to them it's just that i applied what i have uh, learned which is updated in technology so it helped them also so i observed them and i observe how the troubles can be fixed quickly and how it can be put to the different stores properly with planning so observing and then studying and updating it's just like the word of god and then i watch how they do it because like you know if we correlate it i watch their conduct of how they Uh, they have patience in fixing those uh, technical technical machines so i followed i observe for it is no use of man's conduct does not back up his teaching i learn more about the ministry by observing and experience um, leaders or cell leaders and um, i watch his conduct you don't know what someone's else's aim in life is until you watch that person closely so paul said to observe timothy had watched paul's faith patience love steadfastness and above all his persecutions and sufferings if you are going to be an expert christian you must watch this point of suffering so again timothy said to paul observe Now Paul mentions three places in which he suffered in Antioch, Iconium and Lystra. Why only those three? He had been shipwrecked, remember? Here, stoned there, flogged there, put into prison there, hungry somewhere else. Yet here he only mentions three places. Why? The answer is that these are the three towns in Timothy's home district. He is saying, Timothy, you remember the day that dragged me out of Lystra and they threw stones at me until they thought they had killed me. Then they left me lying, bleeding, bruised and broken in the road outside Lystra. Remember that, Timothy? Don't you? Now comes the truth. Every single Christian who would live a godly life in Christ Jesus is going to suffer. This does not mean that every Christian suffers. because i'm afraid there are christians who don't want to live godly lives and don't want holiness but the word is that not some of but all who would live a godly life in christ jesus will suffer in the verses we read 
only those who live a godly life. Why should that be the answer is firstly that you will be different. Your neighbors don't live godly lives. They live ungodly lives. You might be the sort of Christian who would keep your Christianity to the church and your home and never let on to your neighbors. You're only Christians in the church, but never in your neighbor, that you are different. But if you really want to live a godly life, you're going to be so different. They won't like you so much. You won't fit in easily. Someone who had just come to know the Lord told me that straight away they found they couldn't join in the sort of jokes that were told in the office they were. They were different. You, I know you. some of you have experienced that. Or most of us, most of you. When you come to that point, you either join in the jokes and deny your Lord or you live a godly life in Christ Jesus and you say, I'm afraid I don't think that's funny. If you do that, you're going to suffer. Don't be surprised when this sort of things occurs. Indeed. Blessed are you when men shall say all manner of evil falsely against you for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad for so persecuted. They persecuted the prophets which were before you, said Jesus. Paul, like Jesus, was absolutely honest. He did not promise people on easy passage. Wherever he went, he preached. That through much tribulation or trouble, we must enter the kingdom of God. Paul teaches Timothy, you have seen my suffering. If you follow me as an apprentice, you will suffer too. So these days, people may not stone us to death, but they laugh and criticize. They tease and avoid us. They talk about us behind our backs, but in many parts of the world, the suffering of Christians does involve martyrdom even today the other reason why we are bound to suffer is that evil people are going to go from bad to worse verse 13 we can see there the evil people are going from bad to worse sad isn't it the world is not going to get better it's going to get worse it's in the bible godless people are going to become more and more ungodly that is the future of our culture look around feel around therefore the more we go in his history the more different we shall be from them people don't like others who are different let us uh, turn to that lovely truth from all this that the lord rescued me does that mean paul never suffered no but it does mean that he came through the suffering to continue his ministry. The word rescue is not bring you out of something, but to bring you through it. There's a certain kind of religion that wants to be rescued out of everything. Re rescued out of ill health, rescued out of worries, rescued out of troubles, rescued out of burdens. But the Bible teaches that the Lord's rescue is bringing you through them, not out of them. He did not rescue Paul out from the stoning of Lystra. They left him, thinking he was dead from his wounds. God rescued him through it. Paul went on preaching. He is later going to write in verse in chapter 4, The Lord will rescue me from every evil. In verse 18, facing certain death, how can he say, the Lord will rescue me from every evil? When I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, it is not from death I need to be preserved, but from evil. I will fear no evil. Even when it comes to die, no evil can touch the one the Lord rescues. Isn't that a lovely truth? He will rescue you from every evil, every evil, even though you suffer, even though you die as a martyr, the Lord rescues you from every evil. Next, we turn to our equipping. You're going to stand up for suffering and be ready to face persecution. You need equipment. 
because you will have to fight. The equipment that you need is what? The scriptures. For a preacher, here is a sermon with five points. What, who, when, why, and how. What is your equipment? It is what you have learned and firmly believe. Notice that it's not just enough to learn the Bible. It is firmly believed. Some people can learn and quote verses. Remember when we are a child, we're, we're quoting the Bible. We learn about uh, Paul's missionary journeys inside out. I have watched the, you know, the Bible quiz and in America, like uh, you wonder how these children can memorize it. And it's a good thing that when they are, child, they, they are children, they can easily memorize it so that there's a good thing in it. But it has to be firmly believed because um, the word of God can be um, there's an information in it you can memorize but if you don't believe it it has no power but when you learn the bible and firmly believe that's the time you are called you are equipped we remember timothy had learned from his mother and grandmother two godly women who did the finest thing they could do for him today when you go to the different houses where parents are very anxious about their child's education. In the right school, the private school, they have the right friends and good opportunities. Yet, yeah. the one thing those parents don't do for the child is to equip them for life. Well, when do you start? We can hear parents say, I'm not going to give my child religion until they are old enough to decide. So we can say to them, I presume you don't give them any food. Either do you. They are horrified. It is ridiculous to say, Till wait until they are old enough before I give them any religion. It's a fact. Some parents are saying it. They wouldn't do that for their physical condition and they wouldn't do it for the mental condition. So why do it for theirs? Why not do it for their spiritual condition? The word is literally from infancy. Timothy, you have had this equipment. Like Paul said to Timothy, when you were, you were a child, what a privilege you have had that. Mind you, it doesn't mean that a person who has been through a Bible school is a Christian. It just means they have got the equipment. Why? Well, because the Bible can do something for you which no other book can do. It can tell you everything you need to know for salvation. And its only purpose is to lead you to faith in Christ Jesus. In other words, you come to a person through the book. When you trust him, the Bible is the best book you can read to make you wise. Paul writes to Timothy, but you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you had Learn and that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. It is written in the Word of God that all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. I remember when someone told me when I was young, why are you reading the Bible and it's only a book? And I just smiled and... Um, it's not everything he told me. Not all the concepts, not all the, not all that was written there are truth, because it's being only written by people, by men. You know they're wrong because all scripture is given by the inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete through equipped for every good work. There is just few things about this text that I want you to notice. First of all, I'd like you to notice the designation of the Bible in this text. It's called scripture twice. 
In verse 15, from childhood, Timothy, you have known the Holy Scriptures. And then look at verse 16, all Scripture. The word used here for Scripture is graphe. Graphe, that the Greek word is the word where we get our word graph. You, so you think of words like autograph or photograph or lithograph. The word graphe means writing. Why is it important? Because it shows us that, the, that God didn't just think his message. He didn't just speak his message. He didn't just reveal his message and, and dreams and visions. He grabbed it. He saw to it that it was written down in human language. Now, some people have a problem with this. They go, well, you know the Bible. How do we know the Bible? You cannot say the Bible is written by God. There's a whole bunch of people over history. They wrote it down. It's their thoughts. We look at this way. If God has the technology to create the world, He certainly has the technology to make sure a book can get written. That shouldn't be too difficult. What I mean is, I can write a book so certainly God could manage that. If he can create the world, if you can believe Genesis 1-1, the rest is a piece of cake. In the beginning, God created the heavens and, and the earth. So you believe everything. So this is the writing of God, the graphe of God. Now, when he speaks here of the scripture, what is he speaking of? What is Paul referring to primarily? Primarily, he's thinking of the Old Testament. Look at verse 14. You must continue, he said. He is writing to Timothy. You must continue in the things which you have learned and have been assured of knowing from whom you learned them. Now, if we had the time, we can still have this. Um, or you can uh, read about the grandmother who taught his scripture, Eunice and Lois. Their names are mentioned in the other parts of the book. An evangelical differs from many other Christians in that he believes that the whole Bible is God's book, that it's not just a human book, but it is to be absolutely trusted from cover to cover, a book with final authority over everything. I believe in everything I do because it has been inspired by God. 2 Timothy 3.16 is an important verse. The translation of it has been a subject of argument in two versions, it begins, all scripture is inspired by God and profitable. But the footnote in the RSV, Revised Standard Version, indicates that another translation is possible. Every scripture inspired by God is also profitable. That was the translation of the Revised Version of 1880 and the NEB of 1961. At first sight, there is nothing to choose between these two translations. It could be either. But unfortunately, that second 14 one has been taken by some to mean that there are scriptures which are not inspired and that only the inspired parts are profitable. This might sound like quibbling over words to you, but a lot hangs on it. Either this whole book is inspired by God and profitable or only the inspired parts of it are profitable. Which does Paul mean? Fortunately, there can be no doubt about what he means. Until the beginning of the 19th century, no one, Jew or, Gen Jew or Christian, questioned that this book was inspired from cover to cover. But later on, some people began to feel that there were parts of it that were purely human and that many parts of it were not profitable to read. I remember a minister in the church saying, I never preached Leviticus. I've never been able to find anything in it. He felt it was an inspired and unprofitable part of scripture. So when it came to 1880, the revised version translators preferred the other translations because it didn't commit you to the view that the whole scripture was inspired. But only that inspired bits are profitable. The NEB did the same for the same reason. In Paul's mind, there would have been no question that every Old Testament passage is inspired by God and through most of Christian history. Christians believed in the inspiration of the whole Bible. 
from Genesis to Revelation. Paul makes the statement, he does for this reason. Only someone who really believes in the Bible is the inspired word of God will find it profitable for his equipment. Let us look at the, let us look at this word inspired. It means God breath, breathe, literally, God spirited or God winded. Now somebody says, oh, but surely this is a human book, human authors. You can see their their styles. You can see what Paul thought about a thing, what John thought. Well, look at this way. One day God took of the dust of the earth and made the body with it. That is in Genesis. Then he breathed into it and it became quite different. A living soul in the creation of man, isn't it? The Lord breathed spirit. Now, according to a chemist, I am worth maybe a couple of pounds on the open market. In other words, if you could reduce my body to sugar, fat, minerals, and then sell it, that is all I am worth. That is a dust of the earth that is looking at me clearly as an earthly being, but I am worth far more than that because God breathed. God breathed in us. That makes us quite different from a little bit of the dust of the earth. It is true that human authors took a pen and wrote. It is, a, it is true that over 40 of them wrote little bits. So 40... Over 40 of them wrote little bits and not one of them knew he was writing the Bible. But it is also true that God breathed into all of it that makes it something quite different. So those who treat this as purely human book and feed it into computer have missed the real truth. They come out with their computer answers and say, there, that's the truth about the Bible and they have missed it. Just as a scientist who says, I am worth a couple of pounds, worth of chemicals has missed the truth because those chemicals will one day go back to the earth and be finished with. But I go up. Lazarus died and he was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. His body was not the chemicals were finished with it. One day, books made of paper and printer's ink will be finished with. When we get to heaven, there won't be Bibles, but the Word of God still be there. For that is not, that is what was breathed by God. That is why I think so highly of the Bible. Why, as some have said, I've got Bible mania. That is why I will not preach anything but those things that I can find in Scripture, because I can tell tell you something that nobody else in the world can tell you. Not how to be educated, not how to be clever, but how to be wise to salvation. Then you are equipped and you can go out and fight your battles. You can face this coming week, coming months, coming years. You can face the suffering. You can live a godly life because you have been equipped. Put it like this, I ask you. Tell me who you think is a man of God or a woman of God. And let's go and ask the person, what do you do with your Bible? Is it only in your shelf? You're not reading it yet? You will find that a man of God, our Lord Jesus Christ, is a man of the book from Genesis to Revelation. It was, it always goes together. You cannot be equipped without the Bible It is useful for teaching, for reproof, for correction and training. Praise God for His Word is our life. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for your words that you have given us, that Paul's advice to Timothy, who is leading the churches, the different churches, oh God. Like us, Lord God, thank you for your words that is profitable for reproof, for correction so that we can live wisely on earth. Thank you for your words. And that thank you, Lord, that we ne never grow tired of reading about it because of your love, oh God, because of your fat, unfathomable love. May everyone be 
may everyone read our daily devotion because your word is truth and we can live a godly life with holiness through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for leading us. And may each one rest and we'll have another day of uh, serving you, of loving you, O oh Lord God. Thank you for the life of Paul and Timothy that gives us inspiration. And most especially, we thank your Son, Jesus Christ, for his faith on you, Father. So, Lord, lead us uh, in every step of our life. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Make sure to tune in next week for Pastor Alan Bakani will be discussing about the Second Timothy 4. And uh, it's every part of the book, every chapter, every verse, every line are so important that we need to ponder in it. And uh, we will continue with our Bible study. Bye for now. And a happy and blessed week ahead. God bless everyone. Pagasa Center loves you. God loves you most. Bye. Oh, 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 oh,